Hey everybody, welcome to Kingdom One webinar on ministry salary best practices. My name is Nick. I am joined by Trina Myers, our chief uh, HR officer, and uh, also with Whitney, our compensation specialist today. Uh, we have a great webinar uh, planned for you. A couple of things to keep in mind uh, while, while we do this. We would love to chat with you. Being able to chat and building community is one of the most important things that we can do uh, together. So I would love for you guys to hop in the chat. If you're watching on Eventbrite, uh, one of the things you need to do is just click through all the way to uh, YouTube. Uh, and then in the chat, if you could just let us know what ministry you're from, uh, where you're watching from, and that uh, that would be really, really great. Um, so yeah, uh, my name is Nick Ovaya. I am the chief marketing officer here, uh, also the podcast host. Uh, and Kingdom One's mission really is to grow the church together. And we will get into that. Uh, as we talk about um, church salary, ministry salary, compensation, best practices. And so uh, I want to introduce a, a bit of the team to us today. Uh, first off, I want to uh, introduce uh, our uh, compensation host, Whitney. Hi, Whitney. How are you today? Hey, doing well. Awesome. How are you, Nick? So good. So good to, to be here with you. And uh, we also have Trina uh, on the call. Um, Trina, how are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Story time with Andy Hello from Port City Church in North Carolina. So glad that you are tuned in. Uh, and so just wanted to say, hey, thank you. Uh, before we hop into today's, uh, you know, uh, presentation, I just wanted to let you know um, that networking is key here at Kingdom One. And so if you just want to say hi in the chat where you're from again, and then also we would love to know a bit about you. And so let's play a quick little game. Uh, first off, I would say that uh, this is a, a fun game that I, I love to play whenever we do live streams. And the first thing I would say is um, like, can you describe your job using only emojis? Uh, so I'm, I'm looking at some chat. Cynthia Carey can't hear Trina. Oh no, couldn't hear Trina. Oh, thank you for letting us know. We'll, we'll take a look at that in just a second. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to just let us know what you do at your organization in some emojis. And our uh, moderator, London May, uh, you guys say hi to London May. She is uh, moderating for us. And the best emoji comments, we will send you a $20 Starbucks gift card just for participating. So thank you. Hi, Charlene from One and All. So good to see you. So good to see you. A uh, couple of things uh, just to get us started. Uh, if you if you don't know how to do emojis, because that's one of the hardest things on Windows, you just hit the Windows key and you hit the plus, right, Whitney? It's pretty kind of difficult sometimes. Um, and then uh, on Mac, you hit Control Command and Spacebar. It is it can it can get difficult. Ooh, good job, London, with the example. Uh, I like that a lot. Ooh, Stephen Bush. He's a he's a prayer rocket. That's awesome. Uh, story, Andy, I love that one. Cat Wrangler, that is so good, so good. Awesome, awesome. So yeah, you guys keep on keep on chatting. We're gonna hop into um, presentation. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go to that real fast. Uh, and uh, as as we take a look at this, as we hop into today's presentation, um, there's a couple of things, just a, some housekeeping things that would be really nice. Uh, I introduced Trina. She's our uh, CHRO here at Kingdom One. Whitney uh, is an HR director and she's an expert in compensation. So uh, she'll be joining us uh, as part of the conversation. And um, if you don't know anything about Kingdom One, this is so, so huge. As, as an organization, we exist to build courageous, healthy, and effective ministries that grow the church together. Uh, and this is really key in everything that we do, uh, that we are looking out for your growth first and foremost. And so just hear us whenever uh, we're talking about suggestions or we, we might say something uh, that you're like, is that accusatory? We're not here to be accusatory at all, all but we are here to help grow the church to this, this big vision of courageous, healthy, and effective. And the way that we do that is through our values. And I would be amiss if I didn't share, uh, you know, our values here. I'm going to give you a couple of them just real, real fast. Um, but one of my favorite values here at Kingdom One is relationship first. Uh, and the way that we deploy relationship first is uh, we become fast friends. And so there's a lot of trust that's deployed very, very, very quickly. And so just keep that in mind. Um, also ready to grow deep work. Another one of my favorites uh, is this one called No Silos, Egos, or Turf Wars. And what we try to do at Kingdom One is we really try to deploy this idea uh, that we are all the church together. Uh, there might be a church down the street, um, you know, from you. And, and we understand that as a community, as the body of Christ, we're all in this together to collaborate and not to compete with one another. 
another. So just keep that in mind. Hope those resonate well uh, with you. Um, so with that, uh, we're going to talk about uh, compensation best practices. I'm going to hop on out of here, and Whitney and uh, Trina are going to uh, are going to let us let us know all the things. Yeah, that's so strange, Trina. For some reason, I'm not able to hear you. Whitney, am I able to hear you? Can you hear me okay? I can hear you okay, but for some reason, I can't hear Trina. I can hear Trina when she talks. Yeah, but it's not on the live stream. I have a, yeah, for some reason. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. All right. Yeah, no problem. So today, I just kind of want to go over the agenda with all of you. Um, you know, so today we're going to talk a little bit about some of the best practices that we see in comp, um, you know, through, uh, you know, I don't know exactly how many, Trina, like your years in HR and ministry, I think it's over 20, um, you know, some of my comp or my compensation experience from the marketplace before I came into ministry and the ministry experience that I've had, you know, over the three and a half or so years. So what we're going to talk about is best practice number one, really having a compensation philosophy and like a mindset of total rewards for your organization. Number two, competitive pay aligned with performance. And number three, key partnerships and processes. Um, so we're just going to dig into those three today. Um, so really, before we get started, just want to put this in front of you. Like when we talk about compensation management, like what do we mean? Um, so this process of designing, implementing, and maintaining a compensation system that determines the cash equivalent value of jobs and outlines a system for employee financial reward. And the goal of this is to really just attract and retain staff to motivate them while they're there um, to contribute and perform at their best, right? That engagement piece of employees, you know, staying at your organization and the contentment that they find in their role, compensation can be a pretty integral part of that. All right, so now um, just kind of moving into some of these aspects. So comp, um, philosophy and total rewards, competitive pay aligned with performance, key partnerships and processes. These things are also part of a larger body of knowledge that we put together um, in our compensation 101 class that for everybody attending today, you'll, you'll get um, some information after the webinar today on how you can access that for free. So just kind of wanted to put that here in the bigger picture of like compensation 101 holistically in that class, you'll also kind of get the why and sort of those baseline measures when we look at managing compensation in your organization, the compliance, equity internally, um, consistency and transparency, transparency within your org. Um, also the clarity piece, like in regards to organizational structure and your job descriptions, how does that interact with compensation um, and people, right? How do you assess some of the performance and some of the pieces of um, what your people bring to the table through their knowledge, skills, proven, proven and documented performance? You'll just, um, you'll get kind of that next step with the Compensation 101 class after today's webinar. All right, so number one, the comp philosophy and total rewards. Um, we'll dig into this. So really the comp philosophy is holistically why you as an organization um, manage comp. Like, why do you pay your people? <laughs> you know, at the most basic level, you want to align to your mission and values. Um, other planning seasons and cycles, right? Know when you're going to give increases, know when or if you're going to give bonuses and what's some of the criteria that's a part of that, right? Because a lot of this is contingent on your budget availability. So assuming you have budget availability, like X, Y, and Z are some of the criteria that you use in your process um, to give increases and bonuses, all of that can be just such a strong piece of your comp philosophy that you work to develop with your leadership team so that you're all on the same page and, hey, here's how we want to reward people when it comes to compensation. Um, include in that the perspective and resources that you use for market data. A big piece of compensation is like, are we paying competitively to organizations that are like us, that are geographically close to us, that are you know, mission aligned, similar to us? 
whatever it is that your organization values most to look at in market data, that's where you want to include um, a place that you get that, right? And document and clarify this in a plan document, right? Just kind of wrapping it all up, bringing it together is another piece that just brings so much clarity to this process. And with your leadership team, once you decide and put that together, excuse me, um, and then the best practice really is to review it and maintain it once a year. Um, you could align this with your budget cycle as well. Like, hey, as we're looking at comp this year, is this still true for us? Like when we look at this philosophy, when we look at who we want to be and how we pay our people, is this still true? Is there something else we should add? Maybe there's a way that you want to grow your compensation philosophy. Um, those are all questions that are amazing to ask, you know, year over year. And it shouldn't take a ton of time, right? The big lift really is like when you're developing a compensation philosophy for the first time, that's going to be a big lift. But as you maintain year over year, um, it doesn't have to be. Great. That's so, so good. If you guys in chat, you have any questions around this slide specifically and around these three big uh, bucket ideas of compensation philosophy, now is the time to ask those questions in the chat and we can uh, start to uh, start to answer some of those so we don't have like a bulk of questions towards the end. Um, if we move on and you think of something, feel free to drop it in the chat as well. But I do have a question for you, uh, Whitney, when it comes to compensation philosophy, specifically around documentation uh, and in, in that plan, where, where should somebody keep this? Is it something that happens in the HRIS? Is this something that happens within, you know, a Google Doc? Can you maybe give us just a, maybe double click on the documentation portion of this? Yeah. Um, so I would build it probably in whatever tool you use as an organization that's like most easy. So like Google Docs is great. Or if you still use Microsoft products, right? Yeah, I'm using Office 365. So that you can also collaborate with your leadership team, you know, get comments, all of that. I would build it there, but you do want to, you know, house it wherever you house like your policy documentation. Um, and one of the biggest questions that I get is around the transparency of information included in a document like this. Um, like we do have examples, Kingdom One does, it could be a resource for you on like, hey, what should this look like? You know, what's a good template for this? Um, you know, let us know. And we've got, you know, we've got an example of that. We can, and we can also always, you know, have a conversation about what it can look like to put that together. Um, but once you, you know, once you have it in a Google Doc, what I would do is formalize it, like confirm that you're done with all of your leadership team and adopt it. If that is adopting it through an elder approval process or whatever that looks like at your church, it might just be like your leadership team needs to go through a formal approval process. Or maybe you all just say, yes, we're good. And then you start moving with it. Um, an, a piece of the documentation um, to actually implement right what you've created and make it a reality is just having that champion too. Um, and that champion should be your leadership team. Sometimes it may fall more on your operations person or your finance or HR person, um, but viewing it as a team effort, you know, really does help just create the change internally too. So there's a whole change process on the back end that doesn't have to be scary. Um, you know, that's why, you know, Kingdom One exists as a resource for churches to help with things like this. Um, but yeah, for documentation, I think that's flexible depending on your organization and how you guys do things. That's great. Storytime with Andy asks, will we get copies of the slides after the presentation? And the answer is yes, we will send you a PDF and some information on how to access uh, the course that we, we have or a class that we have that goes along with this as well. Excuse me. Awesome. Uh, so next, I just kind of wanted to give you this visual. Uh, when we talk about Total Rewards at Kingdom One, this is what we mean. It's really this holistic idea that includes these five pillars that we're talking about. Um, so compensation really is like the base pay, right? Hourly salary, annual salary, or hourly wage, annual salary, the well-being piece, um, which in churches, we really look at as like mental, emotional, and spiritual health. Um, core benefits, those medical, dental, vision, and retirements, you know, having a 403B option and a plan for that, um, recognition and encouragement as a pillar, and then development and growth holistically makes up that total rewards um, definition that we have. So here, just kind of wanted to get, speak to, you know, what we uh, have to, to offer and help you with right now. You know, we've got a strong 
ability to help with compensation. You know, for this year, we've rolled out our compensation and benefit survey to help with base and variable pay from that market data perspective that we talked about before. Um, well-being, that mental, emotional, spiritual, this is something that many of our team members at Kingdom One are so um, ingrained and in tune to help coach towards um, benefits, also something we can help with. We're, we're building more for recognition and encouragement, and as well as development and growth, we can help with performance management programs and some of those things that feed into that area as well. Uh, so moving on to number two, competitive pay aligned with performance. Um, let's go. I might have a little bit of a lag. Um, so really having a proven and documented um, performance process, this can look so vastly different from organization to organization. Some organizations still have an annual review process, some do a six months process, whatever it is for you. Um, maybe you document performance solely in the context of one-on-one -on -one conversations with a supervisor and an employee and an employee. Whatever that is, right, just make sure that you're doing it consistently um, and that you kind of have criteria set out for your supervisors and staff and what that looks like. Um, this helps with being consistent around equitable decisions that help performance speak to compensation decisions. Um, and that's where you see that influence of pay decisions. What can be difficult, right, is just the objective nature that you want to have as part of this process is sometimes difficult, you know, in the context of a relational environment. So that's why it's important to, you know, build your performance process with a set of criteria up front that all your leaders understand. Um, that too is something that takes a little bit of groundwork to get off the floor before, you know, having it actually function totally in your organization, um, but really helps if you're if you are aiming to have like a, a truly equitable um, and competitive compensation program, performance data is really important. And number three, some of the key partnerships and processes, like we can't do this alone, right? Um, you know, all of us individual people, you try to go in your organization, like we're not getting any of this done by ourselves. Um, so it's important, right, that we just build those relationships and, and have a lot of candor in this process with our executive team and senior leadership team. Because like I said earlier, they're truly the champions of your compensation philosophy. Um, you know, finance, having that partnership between HR and finance, or maybe you are doing both of those things. And work smarter, not harder by aligning with your fiscal year. Um, you know, making sure you have that budget availability for increases and market adjustments if they're needed, um, you know, depending on the skill set of a role and especially like new and emerging skill sets that, you know, say they're like, a, you know, AI and HR, for an example, like in the market is like super new this year. Right. So there's not a lot of data that speaks to that skill set. But next year, we'll probably have a lot more data that sp speaks to the true value like from a dollar's perspective, that skill set that might call for some sort of market adjustment. And I know that that's like probably something that's not going to be encountered in the church. It just came top of mind for me. Uh, but an example of a, a technical skill set that, you know, this year we know nothing about next year, we're going to have more data on could call for a market adjustment to someone's pay. Um, so if you're in finance and HR, right, you have the ability to sort of align all of those things to make it easier for you to manage throughout the year. Whitney, as you talk about AI, um, that's really not to not to dive too far off topic, but ministry AI is something that we have been exploring. Um, and that's very true is like, what, what do you do with uh, an emergent market where prompt engineers and maybe AI stackers who would be a part of your web development team moving forward? Like, what are we going to, what are we going to pay these people and how do we, you know, structure, structure this pay? And so I think that's a, a very keen and relevant topic for, for what we're, we're talking about. Yeah. yeah. And you know, what I, what I do just to real quick sort of answer that question, um, you know, what I would recommend is looking at the skill set that you have in that position. So really being clear on the job description, what they're going to do, what comparable roles do you have in your organization that offer a translatable skill set? Right. So if it's coding, if it's, you know, research, if it's, you know, technical analysis, whatever it is, 
making sure that you know what jobs internally are most comparable. Like you're not going to get a perfect match, but knowing what's most comparable and then having that resource for market data for those comparable positions. And if anything new exists for the new ones, trying to seek that out. Um, most likely if it's brand new, it, it won't be out there. So what I would use is the most comparable data that you have to, um, and to look at that both in the market and internally so that you can come to an equitable place to pay that person. That is so good. That is so good. Thank you for sharing that. Our Spark Compensation uh, is a tool that we have. Um, and what we've realized is that a lot of times the problem uh, with some of the compensation tools in the ministry world is that they're really great, um, but they can be very expensive. And sometimes that cost is a barrier to entry. Um, and the second problem is a lot of times when we're given our reports and our cuts, what we see is that uh, there's not a lot of action items. It's a lot of information. And so what we know as ministry leaders is that uh, we are only as good as our action. And so while information is key and important, um, it's important for us to also take action on it. So if you get a, a tool that you don't understand, or if it's 40 pages of a lot of, you know, um, you know data, but you don't know how to implement that data, uh, it could be problematic. And so what we've tried to do is we've tried to solve this problem, this very big problem uh, of, you know, not only giving you uh, the data, but also giving you time with the compensation expert. Uh, so I think Whitney is going to take us through the tool overview um, and understanding, uh, like, if you opt in to contribute uh, or if you opt in to, uh, you know, take the, the, the actual report, um, what you would be in for looking at Spark Compensation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we just want to take this opportunity to talk a little bit about the tool that we built because we're super passionate about this, right? It's part of having healthy, courageous, and effective teams, work environments um, for ministry and nonprofits staff. So we built a survey, right? Because we saw some of the tools out there um, and just felt like it needed a little bit more love. Um, so we did build a really user-friendly tool um, for a majority of like the organizational data and benefits data that you would find in a survey like this. Um, so, you know, you're going through in like a streamlined fashion. It's um, not tons of tabs on a spreadsheet that you're trying to like find the right place to enter data. Um, so, you know, we um, have had some great feedback on it so far, and are still working with uh, working through the process with several ministries who are inputting their data. Um, and we do have a simplified spreadsheet that we are using for our incumbent and job details. And this is really the information. It's got some in-depth instructions. Um, we have, you know, our compensation survey job list, right, that you go through and you match the jobs in your organization to. And then you fill out the data relevant to that job. We'll never ask for personal individual data, right? We just want the, the data related to a job um, so that we can compare like jobs, like organizations to build a data set that can help with the market component that's so critical to organizations so that we can pay fairly and competitively. Um, so this is, you know, just kind of a snapshot of our spreadsheet. It's bigger than this, but we didn't, you know, want to have the whole thing out here you know and we do have different uh, opportunities for people to like be a part of this it doesn't have to cost money um, a really important part of the compensation survey is the data set that we're building so it is free to contribute um, so if you if you're interested in that or just curious want to talk about it a little more um, you're going to get my email um, and Trina's email at the end of this webinar and you can reach out like no pressure you know we we really do just want to build a tool that's helpful for the church, helpful for leaders in the church, and you know, that's sustainable year over year. Um, so what you will get back if you were to participate and pay for the survey is a really comprehensive compensation and benefits report. So once we close our data collection window, we're going to go through um, a pretty rigorous analysis process, right? Look at all of the data that we have. Um, we have, we're going to have turnover elements. There's going to be a lot of benefits analysis. You, you'll see as you walk through the survey, if you decide to do that, you know, we really want to get an, a good understanding of like that total rewards, like holistic value of employment that churches are giving to their staff so that we can develop with you. Like, how do we have the most healthy, the most effective and courageous staff, right? So that we can be on mission so that we can work towards, you know, this amazing calling that God has us in. 
Um, so that's what'll be a part of that report. And then with that, what you get if you participate is a one hour consultation with a comp expert. And that is really cool because it'll be tailored towards the data from your organization. So like it, it'll, it'll say, just whatever trends that we notice or like pieces in your data that we notice and compare in comparison to the rest of the participants or contributors we'll be able to talk about give you some of those actionable steps on what to do moving forward you also get a final report that's similar to this that will give you um, like the market ranges for the positions that you submitted as part of your data um, and we'll have like a national range and then we'll also give you um, a geographically adjusted range that you can use for you know, whatever the home location of your church is. Awesome. So that's it. Yeah, yeah. Do we have any questions in the chat about uh, what we've what we've talked about? Um, we do have uh, if you want to take a look at the tool, you can go to sparkstaffing.co slash compensation to get some further details. Uh, you can also enroll there in um, yeah, Stephen Bush says, so stoked for everyone who purchases to get a one-hour debrief with a comp expert. That will be super helpful. I do agree that that's, that's the most helpful part is um, knowing what to do with data. And I think that's really, really important. That's why, you know, we have Whitney on our team is because we, when we take a look at, you know, the data that comes in, it can in influence a, a lot of different things uh, that could, could happen within an organization. So thank you for sharing that, Stephen. I know you... If you guys have any questions, uh, we will be sending out. Um, you feel free to, to drop them in the chat. We'll be here just a, a few few moments more. Uh, but I will say, if you have any questions for for Trina or for Whitney, um, their emails are on the screen for you. Um, you can feel free to uh, reach out uh, that way. Just giving anybody if you have any other questions to a uh, few more moments or you can just reach out via email. Sparkstaffing.co slash compensation um, is, a, is a great starting point to, to see all the, um, the benefits of compensation survey. Uh, and our compensation window, uh, Whitney, can you let us know when the compensation window is closing? Yeah, so we're set now to close at the end of the month, um, July 28th. Um, and I know that, you know, if you're hearing that for the first time, that might um, kind of be quick. So if if you were to need more time, you know, reach out to us and let us know and we'll see what we can do to work with you to, you know, potentially give more time or to help in some way. Right. I know that sometimes pulling this data from your HRIS and, you know, distilling it in a way that it needs to be um, for the survey can take a lot of time. But that's something we can help with too. Um, you know, there's there's HR people on our team who are very familiar with compensation and the data in the background who can help do that. Um, so even if you want to participate, but you're like, I don't have the time or the bandwidth, um, let us know because that's something we could help with too. Absolutely. Stephen asks a question, um, and this is a great one. Whitney, can you speak to how to get leadership on board with developing a compensation philosophy? Hmm. Yes, that can be that can be a tough one. Um, where I where I would initially start with that is, you know, looking at your leadership team and the relationships you have with them, right? And also at your organization and some of the flags that you see that you feel like could be improved. Um, you know, I would I would lean towards those flags the ones that you have the most data for and start a conversation with your leadership team. Um, you know, just start talking about it and normalizing it. Sometimes compensation, especially in the church, can be pretty taboo, you know, something we don't want to talk about. Um, and when we say compensation, it doesn't mean give everybody a raise, you know, that's not what it means. Um, it means, you know, we just want to have consistent practices for how we look at pay and how we determine pay. Um, so getting, as far as getting leaders on board, I would look at, are you losing people? You know, some of the flags might be, are you losing people? Like, do you have a high turnover? Um, do you have like any disengagement in your people? You know, are you, are you noticing people not contributing as much? Like some of the buzzwords, right? Quiet quitting. Like, do you see that on your team? If you do, those are all aspects that could potentially be solved, not completely because comp's never going to solve everything, but partially with competitive pay. Another piece of it, like once you start to talk about compensation, once you have like 
a clear perspective as an organization on compensation, communicating that to the level and transparency that you want to, um, how you manage it as an organization so that people feel like they, you know, they know, oh, okay, like they looked at market data for jobs like mine. And that's why I'm paid when I'm paid. Um, oh, and you know, I only have two, two years experience in this role. And like, you know, someone else might have six years and they make X more dollars, you know, what does it look like for employees to grow? And none of it needs to be written in stone, right? You have a caveat as an organization to say, you know, based on budget availability so that you can steward the money that's coming into your organization well, while at the same time stewarding your people well. Um, so long-winded answer, but um, there, there are a few different pieces, right, that I think play into that. Awesome. That's great. Any more questions from chat uh, we can answer for you guys today? Uh, again, you can go to sparkstaffing.co slash compensation uh, to contribute or enroll if you were looking to get a report. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll be around for uh, uh, maybe a minute or two if there's there's no more questions. Um, but yeah, let us let us know if you guys have anything. Uh, and again, you can always reach out to us uh, Hello at kingdom1.co is a good email. Uh, Trina at kingdom1.co and Whitney at kingdom1.co. So I uh, want to say thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Uh, if there's any questions, comments, or thoughts, you can drop those uh, in the comments section below or uh, send us an email. And as always, until we chat again, let's grow the church together. <laughs>